Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and it is my pleasure to be here with you because today's episode is all about numbers, it's all about numbers and how your name and birth numbers attract luck, abundance, and joy, or not. So a little bit later, I've got Jesse Kelsey here, and Dare to Dream has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award, and we are listed in Wealth Magazine is one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. I'm Debbie Dashinger. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do amazing energy work out into the world. You can take their programs anywhere in the world and become a facilitator. Go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I am a media visibility expert. I show you how to write a highly engaging book. You can join my group or work with me privately. Also, if you already have a book that is out, whether it's now or you want to relaunch, I can take you to a guaranteed international best-selling status. I do all the work and you just do your brilliance in the background. And finally, I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts. You can get massive results. I've got a great gift for you if you're ready to learn these things right now and launch yourself visibly and successfully out into the world. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So as I said, today's show, oh, I, I'm, I've been looking forward to this one for a while because Jesse Kelsey is a world-renowned numerologist he specializes in residential and business numerology and provides valuable insight on the power of numbers and how they affect our lives. In his books, The Power of Home Numbers and All About Numbers, he combines his Eastern upbringing with his Western experience to bring awareness and understanding of this phenomenon. Over the past 20 years, Jesse has consulted thousands of people and affected their lives positively. His clients include prominent business people and extremely successful communication and entertainment companies. Jesse has appeared on many radio and television shows in the US and his unique perspective on numerology has amazed his audience. I'll tell you right now, his book amazed me. So highly recommended. He's a successful real estate broker by trade, also a certified Federal Aviation Administration flight instructor and holds a commercials pilot license. Well, he's devoted his life to this and he came here to the US to make this his home and he lives in California with his family. To find out more about him, go to jessekelsey.com. It's J E S S E K a-L-S-I dot com. And I welcome Jesse Kelsey, has a ring to it, Jesse Kelsey, to the Dare to Dream show. So good to have you. Oh, great. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I got to say right from the get-go. So reading your book, loved it, loved it. I had no idea. I've known about numerology, but wow, <clears throat> you go so deeply into the amazing places that numbers impact us. Will you first talk about that? All the things people don't consider that have a number attached to it and are influencing our lives. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, so to, to start with uh, quickly, Debbie, you know, I'll, uh, uh, numerology, like we all know, has many schools. You know, there's we have a system here in the West. Uh, the Chinese look at it in a different way. The Hebrews, the Greeks, the the East Indians, you know, I mean, we all have different perspectives on numerology. And uh, the, the tradition that I practice is, 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 is the Vedic tradition. And this has, uh, has the support of the Chaldean code, you know. So, uh, so, so in this code, I'm sure most listeners are familiar with all these codes, right? The letter and the number association, and, and that's the code I use. So now a step further, I mean, I just don't look at numbers by numbers, right? We also look at them as planetary energy. Right. And so and so what happens is basic numerology, like we all know, goes from number one to number nine and the rest kind of, you know, starts repeating. But then what happens is as it starts repeating, right, it gets more and more complicated. 
So as uh, let's say, for example, the energy of number one has the has uh, number one has the energy of the mighty sun, or nine is Mars, or six is Venus, or seven is Neptune, or four is Uranus, or something. So that's that's the association. Well, the people will find out very quickly. And then, as these numbers kind of increase in their uh, you know uh, in their strength, right, that gets more and more complicated. Let's say, for example, a number nine, right? You look at number nine, say, so number nine is a nine, and then eighteen is a nine, and twenty-seven. That's your data, but 27 is an excellent number. I like 27 a lot. It's been my lucky number. And no wonder I'm here with you. I've talked about that in my book as well. Uh, and then 36, 45, and 54. These are all nine shades, right? So now, say, uh, if, so if you consult with me and I, I tell you, hey, Debbie, your number is a number nine, right? And so then you say, oh, hey, okay, oh, that's great, Jesse. I'm going to go look for a property and I need a, this big house. And you find a property and the number outside is the number 108. And you say, oh, 108, and then Jesse told me number nine is my best number, and I'm going to buy it all cash, right? <laughs> you can buy it any way you want, but that number nine is not good for you. <sighs> Why? Because the number one and the eight are, are conflicting planetary energies, sun and Saturn, father and son, yin and yang, uh, black and white, they never get along together, Right. So what that would do is that'll attract things like cuts, injuries, accidents, family court, legal trouble, separate, whole bunch of stand on the door. But if you are in the law enforcement or if you're in the medical field, or you're a surgeon or a nurse, or, you know, work for the FBI, you'll be successful. But personally, it'll just wreck you, you know? I mean, I'm sorry to use the word, anyone who lives in that place. So that is how this energy is, is very, very complicated, right? So what, what, what happens is, we start with everybody's date of birth, right? We know the date of birth, and that is the starting point. From there, we I drive the best vibrations, you know, the best numbers. So now let's go back to your numbers. Let's talk about uh, your numbers, right? We talk about your numbers a little bit, and you sure, know, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So now, see, when you, uh, you know, I know you're, uh, you're you're born on June the twenty seventh, and then your you see your your strength is Mercury and Venus. So number five and number six are your best numbers. Right. So now with, with this, now this is very good actually. So Mercury and Venus on on numbers as a code is 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 really really good. You know, it's considered to be very lucky. It's very lucky. You know, but the thing is, <clears throat> it is lucky when these numbers are used around you, in your in your name, in your residence, the city you live, the, on your license plate, your phone numbers. You know, just about everywhere. Right then you can really feel the effect of these numbers, right? So um, so like in your case, right, your name, see Debbie Das. So your first name has that energy of Mercury communication and that's exactly what you're doing right now. See, you're sitting there and you're communicating, right? Through your guests to the whole world, right? So yeah. that comes there. And then your last name carries the energy of moon, right? So what happens is your first name, the first name is really good, but your last name has moon energy, right? So moon sometimes, you know, kind of conflicts with Mercury a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so in your case, first name is really good, but but a little correction or a little a little alphabet could be added someplace here, that could uh, you know like a middle initial depending on how it changes or uh, something in the last name, a little letter that can shift the vibration and you know pick it up completely, you know, to resonate with your energy completely, you know. So so that that is what needs to be done. And, and then for then going back into these gems, like now fives and sixes, right? So Mercury and six means ember is very good for you, a green, an emerald. I wonder if you've ever worn an emerald before. I'm sure you must have. You, I actually you have, have never, no. Oh, interesting. So emerald is really good for you. Emerald is going to work great on the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. And emerald for you is communication. Emerald for you is also liquid cash. Oh, I love it. Emerald is the prince of the zodiac, yeah. Oh, emerald is, is your business. Right, yeah. so and this kind of work that you are now in the media, right? An emerald, an emerald is typically worn is worn on your right hand pinky finger. Instead, it's always set in silver or white gold, or it's worn around the neck, and it's touching your heart chakra. You know, manifestation, and it is one stone that will always bring you good luck. Done, <laughs> sold. Yeah. See, so, so that is how we harmonize these energies. Now, then going back to your uh, home number, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't like to talk about your home number outside on, on air, but I can tell you that home, your home number carries a lot of, uh, you know, Neptune energy. Neptune sometimes, you know, is kind of, you have your, you have those dreams are, sometimes you feel there's some energy floating around in your space, you are 
woken up in the middle of the night. So this this energy again could be patched in the sense that you know a small a small number, you know a small number could be added to the existing numbers, patch it to make it flow better with your frequency, with your energy, right? Yeah. So, so that is that is the idea behind it. And again, for phone numbers, I was looking at your phone number. So, and, and, and it was interesting when I just said you need more mercury in there with more 555, right? And that would kind of, you know, make the energy flow better. You know, it'll connect better as, as if those channels kind of open up, you know? That's so the it. cell phone needs more fives and sixes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God knows it doesn't have any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, and that, I think, and, and, you know, cell phones can't pass, so maybe we can try our luck in getting a new number. But I think you definitely would, I mean, it'll be very beneficial if we get a new phone number for you, which has more mercury and Venus energy. So these are, you know, shifts that I can, you know, quickly look at by looking at, you know, your basic energy, right? And, and see the thought behind is this is what? Now we are trying to harmonize the energy, right? We're trying to balance the energy around us, you know? We try to remove those blocks and clutter, right? And these are very, very important, right? I mean. You know, we have people, you know, all kinds of consultants and all kinds of, you know, people have go, go give great information all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you something, right? It's, if your basic energy, if your names are not working, flowing with you or your homes are off or these blocks, right? They can create many, many challenges. I can tell you, I've seen this over the years, you know? And, and you know, you be, and they just be in a, like, you're always chasing your tail, right? And you would never know, you know, what to do, what to do, but but these changes can be, make a huge difference in your life. Okay. Right? Yeah, obviously, um, one just needs to read your book to find out which way the wind can go. And I thought it was really interesting because I was so inspired reading your book. I couldn't wait till you got here. So I started looking into it myself. Uh -huh. And what I quickly found out is that I, now I get why people come to you and pay you for a session because it is so deep. And like you were saying, there were people who would just try to, oh, there's a thing called a patch you put on a house. I know I'll patch my house. And they actually yes. didn't know what they were doing. Yes, and yes. so they put the wrong numbers there and bad things started to happen. And yes, there's a yes. lot of stories. Well, there are stories of people who followed your advice and did very well. And then people who, for whatever reason, went off the rails, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, people so, is is Jesse Kelsey your name originally, or did you change it? Oh, it's a good good question. So my official name is Jasbir J A S B I R Jasbir Singh Kelsey. That is my name, Jasbir Singh Kelsey. My official name, as 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 on my uh, on my passport and everything. But Jesse Kelsey is uh, you know is more <laughs> easier to be pronounced, and I changed it myself. And why I changed it was because the energy of Jesse Kelsey connects better with my my basic energy i'm born on april the third right so all mars energy and it flows better with that energy and if you add this up as for the kelian code it adds up to a number 27. <laughs> Huzzah. no kidding well it's a beautiful name it's got a great ring to it and so for i just want to go over a few of these points so people can follow so when you're talking about changing my name i'm super open by the way just want you to know i'm really open to that um so how do you do that? How do you even figure out how to change somebody's name for them so that they can start to have a different experience out in life? Like, what would you do with my name? What would you do with anybody's name? See, no, see, see with your name, you know, I want see the first one, your, your name, your Debbie, I won't even touch. That's perfect. That's flowing really, really well. I, I would, you know, try to get a middle initial you know, and see if that works. Or I would, you know, maybe add a letter to the last name. So the pronunciation does not change, you know? I would keep the pronunciation the same. But the energy changes. You see how it is? We'll change the energy with a letter. And that can be done very easily. You know, you play it with it a little bit. It takes a little time. And then we can do it, you know? And, and so what that would do is that will basically, um, you know, the, the, the energy would connect with the basic energy, which is your data. But in your case, it's really high energy. And once that connects, you know, and you start using that name everywhere on your business card or the way you start seeing it again, or you start signing in, in, in that way, you will see in, in a short period of time, you just see how it shifts. You see a shift. Okay, so I know name, address, and cell phone. And, you know, maybe we could talk about that offline. And 
so I just want people to hear this. So they're getting an idea of numbers in our life can be harmonizing and influencing. Think about your address, your business name, your hotel room numbers, numbers between partners. I mean, that's another subject oh, altogether. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Timing of plans, bank account number, telephone number, license plate. So here you mentioned, Jesse, about homes. And I know that you're in real estate as well. So what do you do with a house number when you have one person with one set of numbers and a partner with another set of numbers? We won't even go into children. But how do you find what's negotiable between the two? Well, that's easy. We look at both date of birth, you know, and then we arrive at a neutral vibration, some energy that's going to kind of be compatible with both the partners, you know, and then and then accordingly, we I, I suggest you know that this would be the best vibration for you, you know, and uh, yeah, and I've done this over the years, you know, for many years, and by the grace of God, it's you know it's worked for all my clients, you know, so uh, yes, it's it's easy. It's, 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 it's not difficult. Uh, see, what, what, what happens is a lot of people, right? Uh, see, you know, the thing is, I don't, uh, you know, uh, if someone comes to comes to me to consult with me and, uh, you know, uh, they say, uh, some, some of my clients absolutely insist that I go and, you know, find a property for them. You know, I tell them, no, I'm a little busy with this and that. No, 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 you have to come with us. Like this one client I had, uh, and she bought, uh, her daughter was a UC Berkeley grad, and then she graduated and and then I had bought a property for my mother many years ago, and that made a lot of money. And then the mother insisted that I find her the house, right? So, uh, and then we did actually, we got lucky with her. We found her little condo on the bay right here in Emeryville. And, um, and, and the number that I got for her was a number 14, right? It was really good. It was a fast, quick moving number. And in no time, it gained 100,000 in equity, right? So, uh, so it's, but then my point is this, I don't, I'm, you know, if you say, Debbie, you come to me and then you say, Jesse, I'm looking for a house. And, you know, I will, I will not, uh, um, I will not tell you that I'm a numerologist and you have to buy as, no, I'll never do that. You know, I'll never do that. And I will, I will, I'll just go with you and I'll just, you know, <laughs> you know, and whatever you pick, I'll, I'll buy for you. You know, I won't put my opinion on you, but if people ask for it, then I will definitely give you my choice. That is when it comes to property buying and selling. Yeah. I know that you talk about patches and people, I'm sure if they've not yet read your book, won't fully understand that. The idea of patches shifting energy and improving things. Jesse, talk about what is a patch and talk about how people can use it once they've learned through you what to do with it. Okay, so number patching, you know, it has my trademark, right? So this is about adding smaller numbers to existing numbers on a property, you know, it could be a a residence or a, even a business address or uh, or even a TV station. I patched Crown for television in San Francisco one time many years ago, and 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 that got me a lot of media. Or uh, so what happens is we add uh, smaller numbers to the existing numbers. Like I said earlier, all numbers are alive. All these numbers have planetary energy, right? And so when we add a certain number to the existing numbers, it's like adding planetary energy or shifting the energy, right? And they are vibed, they're alive, they're vibrating all the time. And what happens is that'll shift the energy. It'll, it's a very mysterious correction that'll be seen with time, you know? It'll be, there'll be something will shift on the main door. You know, some news will come, which will be positive, right? Some, some shift will happen, which will take the occupants in, a, in the right direction, you know? Some some news will come that will be positive. Something they're waiting for for a long time. See, it's like that, and um, and uh, patching is uh, something that I've done for many 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 years now, and uh, and and simply that people come in. Mo most homes are kind of difficult places, right? They're not comfortable numbers, and that's why people are struggling. And so when they approach me, I I don't go tell everybody go sell your house. No, I patch the houses for them. You know, to the best of my uh, my knowledge and experience and my intuition. And, uh, and by the grace of God, it's, uh, it's been connecting really well over the years, really, really well. Um, then I was just, I was talking about Cron 4 television. That was the biggest one I passed many years ago was a station in San Francisco. I'm wondering if you know, it's a new station. And, and, uh, and then we packed the station and, and, and the energy shifted on the main door was really incredible. And uh, I remember Dr. Phil came in after that and a lot of good things happened to them. Wow, okay, that's amazing. 
so, and it's interesting how many celebrities you've worked with in this country and in India, how, do they find you through word of mouth or are these stories, they somehow make their way out there into the world? Uh, yes, uh, they were just like, you know, some just found me on my website, but this, you know how they go digging around here and there and they, and then uh, quite a few found me through my work, my books, you know, and then, yeah, that's how they found them. And then I, I happened to know some prominent people that I would consulted with me. And then I didn't realize that they were, you know, major players in the industry, you know, and, uh, and they kind of put my name out. So I never went to so seek after any celebrity, you know. I mean, they just kind of, they just found me, you know, and uh, and it's nice. And I'm not, I like celebrities, but I, uh, but the ones that I've worked in India on some huge mega stars, you know, I find them very insecure, you know, they're always like anxious, you know, it's like, That's oh, so interesting. yeah, as if the next, you know, I don't know which big projects are going to fall on their head, you know, it's like that. And yeah, but this interesting energy, but they, they're definitely very high vibe people, you know, they're very, yeah, they're interesting people. But, uh, but yeah, I have uh, been very fortunate to connect with many and then, yeah, they keep calling me once in a while. It's, it's nice to talk to them. That, I'm laughing because I was just contacted by a celebrity who wants to work with me uh, it, for my media training. Uh -huh. And when we got down to it, it's because of her nerves, of her anxiety. And she's stepping into something really big and that's wonderful. <laughs> and exactly what you are saying. Um, through the conversations we've had thus far, I've definitely experienced um, a lot of bravado as yeah. well as insecurity. Sort insecurity, of. yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's it's always nice, you know, all these uh, they come with these energies and all these gorgeous, beautiful women, right? Yes, so, they're exotic creatures. There's, you know, and there's something about their personality, like you get yeah. the charisma and why they are yeah, who yeah. they are. Yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's interesting, and so. Yeah. Also, coming out of, if we are out of, hopefully, uh, COVID-19, is there any significance in that name? Can you tell us anything about the pandemic because of 19? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, Debbie, in my book, you know, uh, I think it's on page 180, so I've talked about COVID-19, right? And uh, I've talked about the numerology of COVID-19, and uh, I've also mentioned the energy of Uranus that came with it. And the year 2020 and a lot of it. And then I've also mentioned and asked for numerology. I had said that it's about early 2023 now, uh, at least a year from now, right? When there'll be a get a better grip on the situation, right? Maybe a better grip. Thank God. Okay. So we still have what eight more months to go before yeah. there's some respite. Yes, yes. I, I said till the end of this year, you know, till the end Very of this year. And I mentioned this last year. So uh yeah. Well, you also say that it's a really good idea to change our bank account number if it is not pulling in the energy opposite of money. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, so you're, you're, yeah, you're right about bank. So what happens is, you know, banks. See, the first thing is the the bank account number. Yes, very important. But the bank that you bank with sometimes also has to connect with your energy. You see. You could be going to Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Chase, J.P. Morgan. You know, it's that energy the bank has to connect with you too, right? And the second thing, you know, you shouldn't open accounts in banks that are kind of tight where there's no parking, you know, tight corner locations. Don't go there, you know? And, but uh, what happened, you know, I mean, things have changed now, but some years ago, what would happen is, you know, people would walk into a bank and, uh, and most account executives are very happy to open an account for you. So they'll throw all the accounts in front of you. So I want this number, this number, but that doesn't happen anymore, right? Now everything is kind of computer generated, right? They, they won't entertain you for any number. So there's no way you take this or <laughs> no account, right? So uh, for that, I suggest, you know, I, I personally like Thursdays and Fridays are good days, you know, Jupiter and Venus energy, or maybe Friday is a good day to, you know, walk into a bank around 11 o'clock, you know, 11 or between 11 and one o'clock. And, and, and then the important thing is to look at the, the name of the bank. See, in this book, I've talked about banks and their energies too. So if the reader, I mean, you look at the bank name and then you see there's some connection with your basic energy, then that's the bank you need to go to, right? And open an account there. But uh, absolutely, uh, the bank accounts will hold money if they are in sync with your energy. Otherwise, you know, you'll always be, you know, uh, you know, yeah. That's it's so interesting. You give a lot of examples in the book of different banks. So 
probably mm -hmm. many people can find their particular bank in there if they go with the industrial corporate banks. I am with a credit union. I prefer credit unions and I'm with actually the actors credit union because I'm part of the union. Uh -huh. So that makes me wonder because it's the entertainment business. It's, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's radio and television uh, after SAG. So I, I, I'll have to do that um, based on what you show us in the book and yeah. see if that vibes with my energy. Sure, sure, yeah, you can do that. Uh, and, and also check the address of the building, you know, what the, the building address. Look at that as well, and uh, you know that'll give you some idea. I, I mean, if it, is, if it has some Venus energy layer, let's say it's at 15, 24, 33, or Mercury, sustain that. Those are very good money numbers. You know, you, you have you have very good numbers, Debbie. I'm telling you, fives and sixes on a, a chord is very good. You just need to use them more. That's it. I'm in it. Okay, whatever it takes. That sounds so incredible. I think up leveling is that's it, right? Wherever you are, everybody wants to go up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, this is a great question because you go so deep in the book. One of the, the things you talk about are a couple's bedroom. There was quite a few details in there. So this one in particular is about coordinating colors yeah. in a couple's bedroom for best results. Yeah, yeah. So is yeah. this again by virtue of looking at numbers and then you can ascertain oh, it needs to be moss green or you know, puce or green or beige or white or gray or et cetera. How do you know that? Well, uh, you know, because over the years I've, you know, I see my clients have taught me a lot too. You know, let me put it this way, right? I've been blessed to meet, you know, thousands of people, right? And, and I have learned a lot from my clients too, you know, to be honest with you, you know, a lot of this. And numbers, of course, is, is more me, but, you know, a lot of this energy and you know, meeting all kinds of people from, you know, from the bottom to the top, right? And, you know, then kind of seeing what went where, you know, that's how a lot of information came. Personally, I like I like the off-white color in a house, right? Like off-white or, a, you know, like a cream, a cream. Cream, yeah. Those colors are pretty standard, you know, they're, you know, I don't, I don't like walls which have different colors, like red and black and different colors, you know? Those those uh, those energies are always block. You know, they create challenges. You find your if you have kids going to school, they won't be able to concentrate. Uh, husband and wife won't have the best relationships. You know, and unexpected and strange things will keep happening all the time because those colors. You know, a painting of wall red in the house. You know, it's not not a good idea. Or black color, or dark purple. These are very heavy energies on house. Or dark gray. I no, 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 no dark gray. No light. You know, keep it light. Off white cream is the best color. And then there's a certain direction, you know, like they say uh, traditionally in, in, in the Vedic culture, but the north, northeast direction, right? You know, that is pretty much the direction from a lot of your wealth and a lot of energy flows towards you, right? Now, and, you know, if you have like a dark blue color there, or some dark color, it's not good, you know? You basically block the flow of that universal wealth that has to come to your house. So these things, these things are very, very important. And then you know when people buy houses, right? We all we know that too. You know when you buy a new house, right? It's always good to get it. No, I mean like a existing house, a brand new house was painted with, with a house and something. You get all the walls painted. You know, you should paint the walls. You know, to, to a lighter color. So you know, any negative emotion that's stuck on those walls is kind of removed, right? Clear. Interesting. You see? It's like saging your house with paint. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Exactly. Saging your house with paint. That's so well said. And, and, and the flooring and things like that. So I, I had many people and they've got into homes, right? And they were very happy to get, a, oh, you know, the owner left us his bed. I said, oh my God. Oh, not a bed. bed. Oh, never. <laughs> oh, Can't no. believe that. You never sleep on anyone's bed, right? Or he left us a couch or he left this. No, no, you don't keep anything there. Everything has to go with the owner, right? Clean it out and start again, right? Yeah. Besides, besides, you know, of course, you start with the number and then we, that's how we look at it inside. And um, yeah. What about trim? So if everything's a light color or cream color inside, how, how about the trim inside a home? Trim's kind of lighter too, you know, some little lighter color, keep it light, you no? Know? Keep it light and um, yeah. Not so then north, north. I mean, this is this is more Vedic tradition. North, northwest is a good point. This 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 is one direction I really like for business, right? So north, northwest, right, right. That point right there, right, is excellent. No? So so it, you know, if you uh, in that point exactly, the north, northwest, you know, you should always place some like a jar of money there, you know, or place your business cards there, or place 
your pamphlets, you know, your, see like in your case, you know, any advertising material or your books or anything, or place, okay. a, or place a globe there. But it has to be North, Northwest, globe for international business. Yeah. I love that. That, I'm, I'm figuring that out. That is done, but also because I love travel so much. Oh yeah. my God. North, Northwest. So use your, uh, you know, your compass and get that exact point, right? And place it exactly there, right? And that is actually for international business. And I was like, you already international, but that is like that, you know, you just seal it, right? Mm. And then, and all your promotion, all your business material goes from there. That's so, gorgeous. I, I imagine as you say that an altar, this is a different I, kind of altar, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. has yeah. things like a jar of money and business cards or yeah. Not many people use business cards anymore, but you know, yeah. pieces of your business there yeah. plus yeah. the globe, it can yeah. be done yeah. really artfully and tastefully. Oh, absolutely. That'd be with a great intention, right? It'll be magical. Absolutely magical. And what was it that you said, Jesse? Reiterate what you said about the Northeast. The Northeast, you said, is your wealth, correct? Uh, North, yeah, Northeast is a very important direction in, you know, in, the, in, the, in, in the Vedic tradition, right? It's, you know, it's, yeah, it is the wealth and it, it is that one portal, right? Which opens all the, you know, the positive vibe that comes into your space, you know? And is there anything in particular we should be putting there? Not that that area should be clean, you know, just keep it clean. No clutter in the Northeast part of the house, right? And don't even, and, and they, what they say is you shouldn't have a, a kitchen or a bathroom in the Northeast, you know, it's not considered to be good. Yeah, it's going to keep it nice and open, clean, right, all the time. And uh, and typically, the people people have some prayer rooms, a prayer room or some energy, that kind of energy there, right, in the northeast corner. And uh, or a lot of people will place some water fountain there, or many would oh. put a fish tank there, you know. So those things are very, I mean, very auspicious. And for big business, you know, it's absolutely fantastic. See, like I've seen many homes in Los Angeles. You know, LA has these huge mansions, you know, and I've been to so many and I've seen a lot of them, you know, they've done it very cleverly, you know, the huge, this big mansion in Bradbury and it's about 12,000 square feet and, and you, uh, it's a nice positive facing Northeast direction and right in front of the main entry door down smack exactly about Northeast, they have this big koi pond, right? The koi pond, lily pads, you know, you know, it's right there. And then the water's kind of falling inwards all the time. And and this and uh, the people who live there are super successful, <laughs> incredibly wealthy. Like have these have like a 20, 30 car garage, and you know. So the energy has been set in such a way, right? I'm I'm talking about direction, and what and what that can do. See what that element can do. Huge, huge, huge. Oh my God, so interesting. And you also talk about Rudraksha beads did i say that right absolutely Th those are my favorite actually rudraksha beads are, do you have some with you or i know T talk about like where would we get them who should wear them why rudraksha beads yeah uh rudraksha beads um you know this 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 one gentleman i'm forgetting his name who uh he was in the secret too uh joe joe vitali talked about rudraksha beads joe vitali by yeah, Tally? yeah yeah he, he wears those rudraksha beads too by the way he wears those too. And, and I, I also know who gave it to him because I had that same lady knows me too. Oh, that's so interesting. Cool. He's been on the show before. He's awesome. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, it's interesting. If you so you're talking to him, ask him what is the beads. But then let me tell you. So these beads are like, um, you know, they are, uh, they grow on trees. You know, it's like, it's like a fruit. And when you kind of open up the fruit, there's a little seed that comes in. So now these trees are found in the, no in the north, uh, northern part in the Himalayan kingdom of India, in the Himalayas, that, that range. It's called the Rudraksha trees that bear this uh, fruit and seed. And then a lot come from Indonesia as well. But the ones that come from Nepal, that area have a very, very high frequency. Now see what happens is a human body is kind of vibrating at about eight or nine joules energy, you know? Eight or nine joules is, is our frequency. Your human body is about there. But some of these Rudraksha beats, they carry the energy uh, like 150 joules, 160 joules. The energy is so high in that. And that's pretty much forever, you know, it's, they never go away. Wow. So some of these beads are kind of very expensive, but they are worn by some very, 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 you know, very, 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 those kind of people, right? But I can definitely let you know where, where, where they're available and all that if you would like it. So now what happens is I'll give you this, 
uh, there are many facets. Not just the cut on the bead is what you, you need to look at, but I kind of like the higher beads. You know, like uh, say for example, an 18 faceted bead, one eight, 18 faceted bead. And I wear one too. So what an 18 facet does it? It works straight on the root chakra, on the foundation, right? The tree. You know how the tree grows. We have a strong foundation, right? So that works straight on the foundation. And what happens, where does money come from? Money comes from the root chakra. You know, if the tree grows right, that's how it grows. So if, if you have a strong root chakra, if your foundation is very strong, there, uh, there'll be a lot of abundance in your life. You don't have to worry about anything. You know, your luck, it'll just keep climbing mysteriously. You know, that is the power of that Rudraksha bead. And then for women, I see women have, you know, have very, you know, challenging lives and they bear children and you know how it is, and they have a different anatomy. So this Rudraksha, the 18 faceted Rudraksha bead is excellent for women in general, you know? You know, it, for all women related issues, right? I, I strongly recommend an 18 faceted bead, right? And then for those who also want to be very successful and financially abundant, right? Uh, 18 faceted is an excellent bead, very high frequency, excellent. Then, the, and then there's a 19, which is also really, really powerful. It's you know, it has the energy of mercury. It's it, it'll give you it's magical. It'll, you have thoughts coming to your mind all the time, and and you wonder you know how how you know you suddenly get an idea and and you, and you execute it right. You get something, it'll come to your head, and you'll find the answer. It's like that. So these are very interesting energies, which uh, which which people should definitely work with. You know. And there are genuine sources that sell these beads, and you should definitely have some. Have some. Okay, so for folks who are interested, it's spelled R U D R A K S H A, Rudraksha beads. Um, you mentioned earlier, Jesse, that emerald would be great for me on my pinky or around my neck near my heart chakra. And then you mentioned either in silver or in white gold. I'm curious because gold actually is what looks amazing on me, not. I do have this silver ring, this blue topaz, and I bought it just because it was stunning. Yeah, but it's absolutely. typically not my my colors. Right. Um, but if I wanted to get gold, 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 is there a reason why the silver color would be better with the emerald? Yeah, see, emerald is a cold stone, right? So they're normally better with a cold metal. So if you see some very big stars in India, you know, like this, the most famous one is Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, right? He's the mega star, the king of Indian cinema. And if you see his hand, he always, not now, for years and years, he wears one in his right pinky finger. And he wears a green emerald, green emerald, right? So, and then the, then the others too, I mean, those who have that energy that, this, that works with an emerald, they all use it, you know, in, in the entertainment business, it is supposed to be fantastic. You should definitely try one, Debbie, you'd be surprised how, how it'll change your, you know, it'll change the frequency around you. And then you're amazed how, uh, magical it is. And does it matter uh, left hand, right hand? It wouldn't matter. Uh, well, well that, that is up to you. Wouldn't, wouldn't matter that much, you know. Again, whatever you 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 know feel conscious, just just wear it. Okay. And, 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 and typically, it's what you start wearing it on a Wednesday, is is the best day for it, right? And uh, uh, and then it's yeah, and it's awesome for for the media business. It, it works with you. It's fantastic. It's, one of the things that you get into also is about, you already talked about the root chakra where money comes from. And I know the balancing of chakras is something you place a lot of import on. Can you talk about that? Things that we should be aware of regarding our chakra system and how we can better align and have a vibration there. Yeah. So, you know, there's uh, something called a chakra meditation, you know, and then, but then I have a little technique, you know, when I consult my clients all the time, you know, before you get into the reading, you know, I have a little, a small little technique that I use and, you know, I, I use some affirmations and I try to balance the energy of the chakras you know, of my client. And then once I do that, then we get into the reading, right? So just to kind of, you know, get into the alignment, right? And, and, and that's really powerful. Now, say, for example, your heart chakra, right? Manifestation or manifest creation. Like I said earlier, a 19 faceted Rudraksha is fantastic. Even if you're having any issues with your heart, you know, if you're, you know, you feel you're worried about the energy around your heart chakra, you know, a lot of women have this breast cancer energy, you know, kind of it comes right around the heart chakra area. So uh, something like a 19 faceted Rudraksha bead will handle it beautifully. It'll just kind of, you know, keep that energy balanced completely, you know, the heart chakra energy. And then it'll, and you can manifest, you know, whatever you want, it'll, it'll, it'll be poured to you. 
it'll be pulled to you. Um, then the root then uh, also for a lot of people and who are into you know the meditation, I'd say a, a 17 faceted is good for the third eye, you know, a 17 faceted we just warn about here. That, that works really, really well too. Um, so these, are, and, and the beauty is, you know, if you, sometimes you can wear them and sometimes you can just place it in your space, but they still keep working with the same energy, you know, endlessly, you know, they're there and they'll keep working with the same energy. Then there's one uh, Rudraksha bead, which is it's very expensive. It's, it's the 21 faceted, the 21 faceted Rudraksha bead. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was talking to somebody lately and they say $50,000 or something. So, uh, uh, so that is uh, that re represents the energy of Lord Lord Kubera is the god of money, you know, as per Indian tradition, god of money, Lord Kubera. So you know all these huge industrialists and you know people who are into extreme wealth, right? They all of them carry that one one bead with them. I know it. So uh, and that's how it is. It has the power to you know, you know, of huge ma massive huge money energy. You know, it's it's like the wealth that you create is basically given to you so that. It's not for you to hold it. It's for you to help the world. You know, you know you can't be greedy, right? You know how it is. So if you something like that comes to you and you amass a lot of wealth, then the guides say, "No, hey, listen, Mister, use it for others too. <laughs> we didn't give it to you for you only." It's like that. And a, and a business. You're talking about people are very successful. So how does somebody look, or how do you look at the numbers in a business? What what is it the business name? Is it the address of the business? Is it everything? How do you calculate that? And how do you know how to realign somebody? Yeah, so, so business energy is, is the same. This is a time for business energy, right? So uh, um, now it depends on what kind of business you're getting into. Are you, is it a startup in the Silicon Valley? Or are you gonna name a project for, a, you know, as a release on a, on a, as a Netflix movie? I don't know what it is, right? Could be anything, right? So that uh, that depends on the energy of that kind of work, entertainment or or the people who are producing it, right? The people who have put their money on the project, right? Will have to work with their frequency, you know. Will have to work with their frequency, their best numbers, and then that the, and then title it accordingly, you know. But typically, what happens is I've seen that Venus, which is one of your numbers, Venus is an excellent number to have on on your movie titles, because Venus rules the media. Venus rules the film industry. It rules television. So Venus is one excellent energy to have on the names all the time. Even the energy of moon, right? Moon's the very mystical, magical moon energy also is really good for, um, for the media. So these two energies will always be there, you know? And then if we come into communication, right? If it is an internet, internet company or something to do with the media, so the Mercury, Mercury works really well there. Or even sun, you know, the energy of number one, you know, if you like at some very big companies like, you know, Infosys or Google or, you know, the, a lot of big names, they'll carry the number one sun energy with them, you know, or, or depending if it is a food business, like say, it's, it's that name is Safeway or the name is something with food, right? That's always works with Neptune, number seven. Seven is excellent for that kind, McDonald's, see? Seven, that, so that energy goes like that. You know, so um, you have any stories about someone who chose something with the wrong number and how it hurt them or became really unlucky or had went bad? You yeah, have many like that. Many. <laughs> uh, there are many, you know, I had this one gentleman here, a friend of mine, right here in the city where I live. This is young, uh, these young three, uh, three guys, and they had, they had a lot of money and they got into the, f they, they bought this huge, you know, it's like a hall and a big food business here. And where they put all their money together to buy this uh, huge facility, and uh, you know they thought we'll have the be the best place, eating place in this city here, and and they did what they did, right? But uh, the number was completely off, and they lost all their money. It just sank, you know. It's it did not run at all, you know. So it so that's that's more like trying to copy people, you know. So my point is that you know if someone is successful, right? So so if someone is Debbie Dessinger. And if she is good at what she's, you can't just copy her blindly, right? Because see, that, that's, that's all it is, you know? So, that, so you have to look at your own strength, right? And, 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 you, and you, you might not know it, but someone can point it out to you, right? Just follow that. And that's what I believe in, you know? But, but I have, I've had many such heavy stories, you know, and uh, yeah, where um, people, <laughs> people lost lo loads of loads of wealth, you know, and, and uh, they just, you know, uh, 
Uh, it must uh, be crazy if somebody invites you to their birthday party and then you know so much about them. It's like you can choose if somebody's in your life, not in your life. They're great to hang out with, maybe yeah, not so much. Yeah. But the thing is, though, no, in the get together, sometimes you always have to be positive, right? You can't, you, know, you, want, to, you, want, to be, you want people to be happy, you know, even sometimes you know that. You know, the numbers are lousy here, but we'll still try to bring the something positive out of it, right? You want to leave a positive message every time, you know? So uh, that's how I look at it, you know? And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, as, as many, I was, as, as one event right here in Stanford one time, they invited me there for uh, for my first book and all that, looking at numbers and all that. And, and there were a few there, but I just kind of just said the right words and, you know, kept everybody happy, you know? You see, if you, if you tell somebody, oh, your numbers are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so yeah, good. Yeah. You want to do that. So why are our birthdays so powerful? Why what can we learn from the number or from our birthdays when we were born? Why is that so important? What I think it's, it's your karma, right? You're you know, you're coming, uh, you know, all your previous life karmas, right? You're born again, right? And you have to, you know, clean up that karma again, right? You have to work again. And then if you've done good karma in your past. I'm sure you come 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 down as you know maybe Bill Gates or you know you know some big energy or see uh, going back to that quickly. See a lot of number nineteen, uh, number nineteen or twenty eight people, right? They come with good karma in their previous lifetimes, and they always end up being luckier than a lot of people. And but what happens is you know when they I've seen this all the time, you know they come in and then they extravagant right they become careless they have very poor relationships or they have many relationships or, or they will get married and they'll cheat on their spouses you know so i've seen this all the time right i mean but they're always in a good position of good uh, high on the ladder but right they, they do it every single time so they uh, they came with good karma but they you know they you know uh, as human beings they just went on a tangent Right, so I, I've seen this all the time with a lot, a lot of people. You see, you look at you look at President Clinton, right? I mean, he did a whole bunch of stuff. And look at this gentleman, Microsoft. This guy who owns Microsoft is pretty much the same thing, right? But you know, so so that energy is it is there. You know, we had uh, the the former Prime Minister of India, uh, who was kind of you know same nineteen energy. You know, she was into a whole bunch of stuff. So many books came out later, right? But see, she was placed as the Prime Minister, but. But you know, energy was completely out. You see how it is? It's completely out. So, but but what I what I believe in is that a good uh, a good date of birth, of course, came with good karma. But how you use it as a human being is, is two different things. You know, completely different things. Interesting. And you know, one of the things you go into in the book is about master numbers. Yeah. And you actually even had a take on. I always thought. That, oh, 11, 11, it's magical. It means great things are coming. And um, when I first started dating the man that I live with now, I, I never even thought about that 11, 11 phenomenon. And all of a sudden it was happening all the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, okay, that must be a good sign. But is it? Uh, in your case, I, 11, 11 for you, I, uh, maybe if you see five fives more, you know, it'll be, it'll be better. You know, yeah, it'd be better. It, it, uh, but your numbers are completely different, right? Your numbers are completely different. And then I think that, I think whoever is attracted to you is just attracted because of your high frequency. You know, I mean, relationships are never a problem for you. They're all drawn to this, these numbers, right? But then with the answering the 11, 11, um, I wouldn't, uh, I, for you, I'd say if you see more fives and all, fives, fives here and there, then you said some positive vibes coming to you. And see, and your car again, the, the car that you drive, should uh, should if you see if you have a car which has like a triple five behind it, right? Three fives, five, five, five there, you know, we awesome, you see, awesome. And uh, so that's Mercury three times because the, the fives on a car, as because fives kind of prominent with you, would be fantastic, you know. Amazing. Phone, yeah, yeah. And why? Because then you have see your phone or rings in your car, the, the messages that'll come in will be really good. You know, you'll be safe inside your car. I remember one time I had this one gal, uh, she was uh, some Hollywood actress, you know, some years ago, and she was, I was talking to her and she told me about her car. 
and her boyfriend had gifted her an expensive Porsche, right? And we're looking at the numbers, and I said, oh, I said, no, no, this this, this red Porsche, and I want to work for you. And and uh, so she said, then she told me this whole story. So she's up on Highway 405, right? And that red Porsche, right, was rear-ended. And she told me the whole story. I said, yeah, I was telling you that this number and this color is not going to work for you. So what, she was happy it was a free gift, free car, but, but it was not lucky, see? So, we're, we're, you know, we, wanted, we want something that's lucky, you know? Yeah, you know, I think that's so fascinating what, are you, what you're sharing because we're groomed in a way by the media to go, oh, 11, 11, magic. Oh, you know, 11, 22, 33, these are master numbers. Oh, and it's just what I hear from you is it's not so for everybody. Absolutely. When you have your numbers okay. done correctly, then you can pick and pull, not this, that won't work for you, but this is lucky and will attract what you prefer. Absolutely. See the number 11, like talking about the number 11 master number, right? See, I, I've seen a lot of people and I've consulted over the years having, you know, some psychic said, oh, 11 house number or take it. It's a master number, take it. Yes. See, 11 on a house number, I can tell you, will absolutely bring in money problems and your relationship. 11, if you research this in your own circle of friends and all, right? 11, and even has a zero, they're 101, 111, 110 absolute relationship challenge you, you attract the wrong people guaranteed and suddenly money will go in a tangent absolutely you know i had this one uh, one gentleman he's pretty high from actually he was a he's still he i just spoke to him the day before yes he's an eye surgeon and he's in southern california i've, I've been to his place a few times so when my the, when my first book came out he, he wanted me to come and see him which i did his house number was a number 11 right and I mean, he was into surgery eye surgery on a daily basis so when i went to see this guy right there was and uh, he's, he was from this uh, some African country, and then he was there, and his wife was there, and then there was another gal sitting there, right? So and then we were just chatting, and so, and then what were numbers and all this? So I said, this number outside, that I said, sir, it doesn't work with your data, but what should we do? So what we did was we used a number four between the two ones. We use a four because Sun and Neptune are like mirror images, you know? So one, four, and a one, right? We, we used it that way. And so what that, what that did was that shifted the energy because the girl who was sitting there with his wife was actually his mistress. And she was in and out of the house all the time. And the poor wife was like, oh, you know, saggy face down, so miserable, right? And she used to call me once in a while, did her numbers and all that. But things have changed now. So they sold their house last year for, you know, for a really happy amount of money. And he's renting now in a different place. And uh, you know, he's still, uh, you know, practicing his medicine. And uh, really believes me a lot for some strange reason. And, uh, but, but that's what a master number can do, you know? See how it is? Yeah. I, you know, I'm curious too. I have a client. Of course, I can't say much about her because I would protect anybody's... Hmm name and business, but she's in much the same business as you. Uh -huh. And uh, one of her websites is 1111. Oh. And I, I wonder if that is not working for her. No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't put 1111 there, no. You must be with your own numbers. Just don't copy anybody blindly, no. I will never do that. I'll have her listen to this for sure. Okay. <laughs> um, so people listening who are going, wow, this is incredible. How can they use this power? How can they just find certain numbers? Do they look for emails? Do they look at their passwords? How do they choose dates for success? All of that. Where's the place to start? And well, how do you figure question. it out? You talk about emails and passwords. Those, those are very important too, right? Yeah, those are very, very important. Uh, uh, see, for you, I'd suggest one <laughs> password. Shall I give it openly? Maybe we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is hilarious no, wow no, we'll, we'll do your password after the show and i don't want the whole world to know your password okay <laughs> thank you okay this is okay yeah so yeah emails like you said is great very important right you know emails also have to have the energy of uh you know that uh, it comes with good information right so those uh numbers that come on your email right you can tag them as your basic energy you know like uh you know denise uh zero seven if that's your best number right mm -hmm. so it's like that you know and um yeah so emails and then your these like what you just mentioned your personal codes right your what you use in your bank accounts or your you know if you have uh, you know stock portfolios or whatever those numbers are very very important you know has to have the right passwords too um and so now your question is where do you get all this information now see what happens is uh, this because there's so much information right and and there are many sources to get this information you know but uh, but my books are one. 
Yeah. See, now, the thing is, uh, my book, the, this book that we're talking about, all about numbers, right? So now, this, not as important, I like to say that this book has a lot of information, right? It's applied information, I've lived it. But then also, I like to tell your audience and, and the listeners that this is not a how-to book, right. you see? It's important to understand that. You know, I don't want to, I don't want someone to buy the book and say, hey, you know, you know, we wanted to know this patch and it's in how it is because there's so much information and it is impossible to put everything in one book. You see? So uh, so you know, looking at someone's numbers and then consulting with them is one way. Or, or there are some very smart, savvy people who can just read books and then maybe try to get some information for themselves, depending on how how it is going to come to them, you know. And uh, there are many people, you know, I've I've had many clients, you know, who um call me and then say, oh, you know, we were just driven to talk to you, you know. Other day I had this one lady, you know, up in Texas here and she lost her, 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 her husband's an oil, oil executive and he suddenly went on a tangent. A 24-year-old son passed away and her whole life's kind of gone upside down. So, mm -hmm. and then I looked at the numbers completely out, right? And then she said, I've consulted some people, but I was just drawn to talk to you. So it comes like that, right? It's like the universe will send that person to you. Yeah, that's right? beautiful. Yeah. And what about you, Jesse? What do you do every day that keeps you grounded? What kind of ritual or practice do you do on a daily basis? I, uh, you know, I, I start my day each day with gratitude. You know, I, I say my prayers and I'm always grateful for everything God has given me, you know. And then I, I, I like to, you know, uh, go to the gym a little bit. I like to ride my bike a little with my son, you know, and spend time with him. And then I kind of like to keep be quiet, you know. I don't want to... I just like to spend my time very quietly, you know, mm. go and sit at the lake someplace. But I like the water, though. I like, you know, the water line, you know, Southern California, the, you know, by the water line, the Malibu area, the, by the water line there, or maybe here in San Francisco, this area. I like the water, yeah. Oh, there you go. So you have a little puppy there. So. And this uh, is Chair to Dream, Jesse. What are you next, Chair to Dream? What are your future dreams or goals? I, I want to write some more, you know, write some more books, and uh, and then I want to uh, I want to do some work in uh, you know in in, in in you know in the film industry in the in the Hollywood industry, you know, maybe put some something out in uh, in the uh, some something like a film or something like a documentary or something on Netflix, you know, some energy like that kind of for the masses, you know, to so that this information is passed out to more people. You know, so uh, people could benefit in some way, but it's just the thought I put it out there. We'll see how it comes back, or it, or what, uh, or in what way it will manifest. So, so you're talking about specifically about the work you do with numbers. You'd like to have something out there on a Netflix type channel. Yeah, yeah, you know where, um, you know, more like television. You sit down, you you know, and people call and you answer questions, or more positive energy like that, right? And uh, yeah, but I, I, I do a lot of radio, you know, I've been, I was in, on this one last week, this one in San Diego Morning News and a couple of, so those keep coming, but I want to kind of get, get out of the radio waves and kind of be more visible, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I could see you doing this. So anyone listening, you have connections, if you're a showrunner, you know who to reach out to. Yeah. And what would you like to say here at the end, Jesse, anything that you'd like to tell the listeners? So uh, what I like to say is this, and I want to pay attention to your, uh, to your numbers, you know, pay attention to where you live, you know, and, uh, and uh, if you, uh, and, and just see what's happening around you. I mean, if you're not very happy in your work environment, if you're not happy in the relationships or, or, or other things in your life, right? Do, do uh, look at this, this energy of numbers around you, because the thought here is, to uh, find your basic energies and to fine tune your life for the highest resonance, right? So give this perspective, this angle a little thought to, uh, to live a better life, to live a happier life. Mm. To live a better, happier life. And if you'd like to find out more about him and his work, go to jessiekelsey.com. It's J-E-S-S-E-K-A-L-S-I.com. And I end today's show with this quote, Numerology is the bridge between who you are now and who you have the potential to be. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, 
If you're listening on podcast and you'd like to see what myself and my guests look like, the animation I think is the best way, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, leave a comment, subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. Next week on the show, I am featuring Sister Jenna, who is an emotional wellness expert, author, radio and TV personality, and founder of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Museums in Virginia. Thanks for joining us today, folks. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to have your numbers done so that you can make all your dreams come true with great ease.